Hi, everybody. Deborah Morris, your Central Florida realtor. I ran into somebody very interesting at a recent chamber networking event. I ran into somebody from the Small Business Administration. So I would like to introduce you to a special lady. Her name is Sandra Lawson. And of course, she is with the Small Business Administration Public Affairs Specialist. Now, why am I bringing her to you? Yes, we had our storms last fall. Well, you know, there may be some people out there that may need to share some of the benefits or know about some of the benefits that she has to offer that we may not have thought of before. So I'm just going to let her talk, share some tips, possibly some stories that you can relate to, and then we'll take it from there. Sandra, thank you so much for being here today. All yours. Excellent. Thank you so much, Pam, Deborah. Um, you know, disaster recovery and all that work that goes into it and the impact on the lives of the people in the community, it can be overwhelming, but uh, there's always hope and there's always help. Uh, one facet of help is the federal government and the Small Business Administration is a federal agency. And most people think when they hear Small Business Administration or SBA, they think about businesses and loans to help businesses do business. But in times of disaster, the SBA has a disaster arm that goes into the communities to provide federal resources to help a homeowner or renter, a business of any size, as well as private nonprofits get back on their feet. And so we work alongside with FEMA, you know, and everybody's familiar with FEMA. They're the lead agency for emergency management, where the SBA uh, provides loan funds. So it's a lender uh, through the Department of Treasury. So the government wants to enable the communities to get back on their feet through supplying federal dollars by way of a loan at a low interest rate with long terms. And so that's the selling point. You know, sometimes people think, well, you know, I want the grant money and that's what FEMA is for, to make you safe and sanitary. But what about your long-term needs? What if you don't have enough insurance to put your home back together? That's where this small business disaster loan comes into place. And what we do is we provide physical damage loans to help you build back your the structure of your home. You know, if the hurricane damaged your home significantly and you can't get all of the funding together from insurance or no insurance or grant monies to rebuild your home properly, then that's what the disaster loan program is for, for homeowners. And the contents of your home that were damaged you know, your appliances, your equipment, your furnishing, your clothes, your vehicles, things like that. If they got damaged, that money from the disaster loan program can be used to repair, replace the things that you lost, your possessions. So just for example, for a homeowner, uh, we have a, a long-term low interest loan and these loans are regulated by Congress, you know, so a homeowner could get up to $200,000 to repair things in their home, their physical structure and the, and the personal property. Uh, $200,000 for the physical stuff on the structure, but another $40,000 for the personal property. So it's up to $240,000 and up to 30 years. And the rates are really low and they vary per quarter. These things are set by Congress. So it's a federal program with federal guidelines. So um, other opportunities for a renter, if you've got uh, rental property, you're a homeowner yourself, you have a primary residence, but you've got rental property. So your rental property can be uh, viewed as a business. So on for businesses, the limit on the loan for your business structure and its contents would be $2 million, up to $2 million. So some people have their primary residence and they have another house that they rent out. That's a business. The primary residence is the one that you live in. So it's considered, you know, your homeowner 
uh, application, but you can make two applications, one for the home that you live in, primary, and one for your secondary home, which you rent out to someone. And you'll just have to show, you know, that the property is being rented or that you have other family members residing in that secondary property, okay? So there, there are things that uh, you won't know about unless you have a need, unless you go into the, we have the disaster recovery centers and the business recovery centers. Whenever a disaster is declared in every county that's impacted, the centers are there staffed with a federal uh, employees that will take your application. They'll listen to what you have to say. Tell your story. What happened to you? They'll tell you how to apply and what's available, and they'll guide you through the process. So, uh, you know, even if you're uh, 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 apartment owner, and if your tenants had damages, your tenants could apply on their own to FEMA and the SBA for their personal property losses. Anything that they are responsible for in your apartment unit, they can apply for assistance to recover from their damages on their own. You as the owner of the building can apply as a business for recovery of your property losses as a business. So, is there a time, is there an expiration? Because I know the storms were last fall. So I know, and you're still here in Florida right. to take care of things. Good question. So for whenever the declarations come out, there's always a deadline associated with when and how to apply. For physical damages for Hurricane Ian, which happened in last October, this is only February, but uh, the window was from... Uh, the beginning of the declaration period through July, I mean, January 12th. Okay, so the physical damages are over with for Ian, but economic injury for small businesses and private nonprofits is still open through June. Okay, so that, that uh, apartment owner is a small business or a private nonprofit that can still apply for the business that they lost not for physical damages anymore, but for economic injury. You lost business because you couldn't do business or nobody could stay with, you know, rent from you anymore, that kind of thing, economic injury. So that one's still open for Ian. Uh, for Hurricane Nicole, which uh, Seminole uh, County and Volusia and, you know, the surrounding counties also were eligible for it. Um, Economic injury is still open through September. So for small businesses and private nonprofits, they still have a chance to apply. And those centers in Volusia, we have the Volusia Health Department. We have the uh, Daytona Regional Library at City Island. That, that we have representatives in both those locations, Monday through Saturdays from nine to six, waiting to help anybody that has questions, if you've already applied and you did get your physical damage application in there, you have questions, you don't wanna call the 800 number or wait online, go back to the center, the people are still there, they're waiting to answer your questions, give you a status on your application. But the beauty of all of this is that with Hurricane Nicole, if you had physical damages as a homeowner, renter, big business or small one or a nonprofit, we do have, and it's not widely known, a 15-day grace period. So for Nicole, the applicant, the physical damage application deadline was yesterday, the 13th of February. 15 days, you can still apply with grace, right? Typically, they'll want to know, why didn't you apply? Maybe, you know, just tell them whatever you tell them for your reason and put the application in. You'll still be considered for the physical damages. Again, homeowner, renter, big business, small business, private nonprofits, that's anybody that got damages. Okay, two things. Number one, I want to say, yes, Central Florida got hit with a lot more flooding with Nicole. So thank you very much for that reminder. 15 days, you all. So number two, remind us again, how is the best way for them to get the applications in? 
the best way to get the app. In my view, I like, I'm, I can do okay on the computer, but sometimes I'm a little bit challenged and I might misunderstand some of the wording on questions on the application. And that happens. We had one homeowner who was elderly, but she misunderstood the question. And it's a valid, a pro, you know, it could happen to anybody. It's our perspectives were all different. It said size of household. Well, in her mind, she was so busy working, trying to get her house cleaned up. She thought square footage, and that's what she put. So the application got kicked back because the number was too big, you know, right? So they kicked back saying, okay, um, you know, we need more information. We need to understand what's this. So you're declined until you fill us in and tell us what's what's going on. So anyway, we figured it out. She told us, no, that's, I'm only one versus 900, okay? So now she had, she's been approved, but I said that to say, when you go into the center, you can communicate with the representatives and they'll ask you the question. And if you give an answer like 900, they'll be able to say, how many people are living in your home? To clarify, so that's that's the advantage. But if you choose not to do that and go into a center, we always have the online component is open 24-7, uh, disasterloanassistance.sba.gov, disasterloanassistance.sba.gov. Okay, and remind me where the locations are again. You mentioned two, right? Is that all that we have here in South uh, Florida? The location would be for closest to for us here mm -hmm. would be Volusia County uh, Health Department. It's in Daytona Beach on uh, 1845 Holzenbach Drive. It's okay. the Volusia County Health Department. And then the second one is the Daytona uh, Beach Regional Library at City Island. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write this down as well. And so that way people can... Uh, listen to you on the video as well as see the text um, okay. where these are. So that way we can get this out to as many people as possible. And so you said, and what is, I have the website and I have the location. Those are the, that's the two best resources as far as getting their information taken care of, right? Right. And okay. if they want to call the 800 number, if they forget or, or can't get the address or whatever, 800-659- Two nine five five. Wonderful. Well, this has been very educational. I really do appreciate you taking the time out to talk to us and all the viewers. Um, if you have any questions and need us to connect you with her or anybody else um, that is here locally to help you out with your various needs, please reach out to Chuck and myself, 321-348-0014. It's not always about real estate. Yes, in turn, it, it depends on where you live. You want to be safe and you want to make sure that you get things taken care of when you have, um, have the storms, right? Um, but anyway, thank you so much, Senator Lawson. And we do look forward to seeing you at the next Chamber event. You all have Thank a great you so day. Much, Thank you.